Greetings AP Calculus AB students, Mr. Record here. We are taking a look at video number two from topic 5.4, all about using the first derivative test, determining relative mins and maxes. And we're going to look at our second example, which is really example one, part B. So if you remember anything about part B, a's example. We talked a little bit about some vocabulary here, extrema, minima, and maxima, and then we really introduced really the, the underpinnings of this lesson, all about using the first derivative test, knowing that if a derivative changes its sign from a negative to a positive, as you can see here in this upper right leftmost picture, the point at which that change occurs is going to be a relative minimum. That's the low point of that uh, particular region um, of that graph. And likewise, if the derivative changes from positive to negative, we know we have a relative maximum. Well, we went ahead and looked at example one, part A. So we are now going to go ahead and take a look at our part B example, which shows a function f of x that's equivalent to x squared minus 4 raised to the 2 thirds. So we got a little bit of a different look to our function. So our first step, as always, is to take the derivative. And this derivative is going to give us 2 thirds out in front multiplied by x squared minus 4 to the negative 1 third power. And then we multiply by 2x. There we're using the chain rule. Chain rule is never going to go away, you guys. Uh, you always want to have a very strong command over the chain rule if you're a Calculus 1 student. If we simplify this a bit, the numerator could become 4x. The denominator could be 3 times the cubed root of x squared minus 4. And that's really about as simple as you can make this look. And that's a great way to make this look because you can very easily find your critical values. Remember, critical values are going to occur when either your first derivative is equal to 0 or when your first derivative is undefined. All right, if we take a little bit closer look at this, the derivative will equal 0 when the numerator is only 0. And that occurs at 0, of course. And then for our derivative being undefined, well, that's when this denominator is going to be undefined. And if you think about setting the, uh, I'm sorry, it's where the denominator is going to equal 0. Let's say that one more time. The fraction is undefined when the denominator is equal to 0. Basically, we divide by 3. We cube both sides. You're just looking at this equation here, and it probably won't take long for you to realize that plus or minus 2 will serve as your critical values. So we have three critical values that we're going to have to toss into our number line. So we'll draw our number line and we'll set our critical values in at negative 2 and 0 and positive 2. Just space them out however you would like. And then remember, you always label the top as the sign of your derivative. So in this case, it's the sign of f prime. And the bottom part, you could label as the behavior of f. So let's find a test value somewhere between negative infinity and negative 3. Lots of things to choose from. Or I'm sorry, between negative infinity and negative 2. Lots of things to choose from. I'm going to choose negative 3. And we're going to plug this negative 3 into our derivative. And I think this is probably the best looking derivative as any. So I'm going to highlight that so I don't forget that. So what do I get? If I plug in negative 3 to the top, I get negative 12, of course. And then in the denominator, I've got 3 times the cube root of negative 3 squared is 9, minus 4 is 5. Now, if you look at this very closely, you're going to see that you have a negative value. OK, so that means that all the behavior that I have along this interval is that of decreasing. I move on to my next test value. Somewhere between negative 2 and 0, how about we try negative 1? We plug in negative 1 to the top, we get negative 4. We plug in negative 1 into the bottom, negative 1 squared is 1, minus 4 is negative 3. Now take care here, you can take the cube root of a negative number, it will have a negative result. So when you have this negative divided by negative, the result is positive, and therefore our interval is going to be that of increasing. Between 0 and 2, we're going to try 1. We plug 1 into the top, we get positive 4. The bottom is the 3 times the cube root of negative 3. 
all of this is going to be a negative result, so all of this is decreasing. And then last but not least, we'll try positive 3. That's a 12 on the top and a 3 cubed root of 5 in the bottom for a positive and thus increasing. All right, so if you're following along, maybe you're using uh, the, the notes guide that I have given you. You can pause if, if you need to catch up here just a little bit, but we're just about done with the problem because this really there's just only one thing to do, and that's to write our answer. The directions are to find the relative extrema. So if you know you go from a decreasing to an increasing, as we do on two different occasions, that would de denote a relative minimum. So you'll say that we have a relative min, and it occurs two different occasions, at x equal negative 2 and at x equal positive 2. Now you want to give me some reasoning, and that would be because the derivative f prime of x changes from a negative to a positive. You can abbreviate negative and positive. You could even use the minus and plus signs. We'll accept that. You probably want to say, you know, at those values to maybe be a little bit more clear with what's happening. And then we have an increase to decrease here at zero. So that would suggest that we have a relative max at x equals zero. And the reasoning would be because f prime of x changes. What does it change? It changes from positive to negative. And we'll even be a little bit more precise and say at x equals 0. And that would take care of this. Now, I'd like to get a little bit of visual proof for this, but I didn't want to reach for my calculator. I've already done this for you. If you take a look at this middle graph, we see indeed our relative mins did occur at x equal 2 and negative 2 after all. And the maximum did occur at 0 for that particular graph. Hope this helps. Obviously, you can see that we do have another example coming up. The next one, example C, is very interesting. It's got an interesting little wrinkle to it, so we'd definitely like you to tune in for example one, part C. Anyway, hope this helps. We'll see you next time.